Hello, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. How are you? I hope you are doing well. Let me just throw this out here before we continue in the video. Thank you so much for all of your support on the channel and for your wonderful comments and everything that you guys um, have said to me behind the scenes. Thank you so much for that. And for those who are new, I welcome you to my channel. You know, you know, I think it's difficult to live a life you know, trying to understand why your family behaves like they do. I, I just, I feel like we need to, to have some kind of permission to feel some kind of way about our families. I think in our society today, as I've talked about many videos in this series so far, that, you know, our society really promotes and highlights families to the point where, um, you know, it just, it feels like you're not justified. It feels like you're not supported in having feelings that go contrary to the grains of society. You know, it's almost like, you know, any of your feelings that you have about the instability and the, and, uh, the lack of health within your family doesn't necessarily get paid attention to. And that could be, you know, with a therapist you're talking to who's really uninformed about this topic. It could be a friend, a coworker, a family member. And it could also be on YouTube. I'm hoping that in this series and specifically in this video today that you will find some guidance. Now, in today's video, I want to talk about demystifying abusive and traumatic family relationships. So there's going to be a lot of information jam-packed into this video. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump in. Let me introduce myself in case you're new to the channel. My name is Tamara and I'm an internationally and board certified trauma therapist. I'm also licensed in mental health and I specialize in treating children, teens, and families as well as adults within my private practice who are dealing with trauma. Let's jump in. So, you know, because there's a lot of information in this video, I think I'm just going to jump right in. There's really not much that I need to uh, preface you with. There's really, um, you know, clear information here. I just want to be able to get to all of it. So let me define briefly, though, family violence. Now, family violence can also be defined as domestic violence. It can also be defined as uh, intimate partner violence, okay? It doesn't necessarily have to just mean the those two things but it can family violence is basically physical sexual emotional and psychological abuse that is um, is utilized within a family for various reasons right so if you're being sexually abused that could be because you know maybe that family member is a sex addict or maybe they are trying to experiment and they don't have anybody else to experiment with so they're using you that happens a lot among siblings i've seen it so so many times and uh, it's very very depressing i actually talk about sexual abuse right up here in this video i encourage you to to uh, go visit that video and uh, just a disclaimer there is a lot of information in that video that could be traumatic so i warn you with that one but uh, some siblings do use each other and step siblings and things like that so have siblings sometimes as well so um you know sometimes uh, sexual violence within a family is used to self-gratify or to gratify uh other times it is utilized uh to keep the very sick and unstable father stepfather biological father whatever mom's boyfriend you know dad's girlfriend sexually satisfied while the parent who is not doing the behavior may cover their eyes and say i don't see it i don't see it and that's sad so that is family violence uh psychological and emotional abuse is also family violence um and i can also add in here a physical abuse as well so being beat up and harassed and assault assaulted and, and so forth okay so that's kind of what we're utilizing as the foundation of this topic today which is family violence is a part of a abusive and traumatic uh, family environment. So the first thing that you're likely to see in a family where there is abuse and traumatic interactions would be um, intentional use of force. What I mean by this is you may get a family member, a sibling, a step parent, a, you know, a, a, a boyfriend or a spouse to your parent who intentionally uses force to control you. 
Um, and that force doesn't necessarily have to be physical force. It doesn't have to be getting beat with a belt. It doesn't have to be getting beat with an extension cord. It could be something like, I'm going to whisper to you that I'm going to violate you, that I'm going to choke you, I'm going to strangle you, I'm going to harm you if I don't get my way. And so um, we're not talking, I'm going to spank you because you're acting up. We're not talking, I'm going to use corporal punishment because I believe kids should be spanked. We are talking, I, I am going to intimidate you into a position of fear. And I'm going to make sure that you understand that I am in control. It's a very narcissistic and sociopathic way to engage with your family. It is traumatic, it is abusive, it is frightening, and it often leads to post-traumatic stress disorder or complex PTSD. The next thing is trauma bonding and trauma bonding with intention. Here's what I mean by that. Traumatic bonding can happen unintentionally. You have a parent that has two sides to them, Mr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So, wait, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, Mr. Hyde, Mr. Jekyll, okay. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You have a good father who is loving and caring, for example. But then you also have a flip side of him. He's abusive, he's neglectful, he's overwhelming, um, he's pushy, he's dominating. What happens with you in traumatic bonding is that you get kind of stuck in the middle of, of that parent's switchable behaviors. You know, it's like the Joker. Here's my mask one day, here's my normal, my normal face the next day, you know? And so it kind of keeps you in this place of limbo right you, it's almost like cognitive dissonance you know you can't you can't hold it in your mind at the same time that you have a father who's loving and a father who's abusive so you drop the abusive dad you drop that image that understanding and you uphold the fact that he's a good dad and so that cognitive dissonance that place of being stuck kind of keeps you stuck and you have a hard time understanding what's happening to you you're bonded to that father when you really shouldn't be because he's so very abusive okay so that's traumatic bonding in an unintentional way but traumatic bonding intentionally i think what i'm meaning by that and i and i want to make sure that i'm making this very clear to you is the father the mother whoever this family member is the cousin the brother whoever they utilize the good sides of them to pull you in it's almost like what we call grooming it's like you know a predator grooms you so that you will respond to them in a way that would allow them to get their way so this kind of traumatic bonding would be this family member is utilizing the good relationship that you have with them utilizing the loving part of who they are to reel you in so that you can then become bonded and then continue to be traumatized and abused by them the next thing is forced relationships now you know this sometimes happens within cultures the indian culture sometimes the muslim culture sometimes even the um, African culture has arranged marriages and things like that. So we're going to exclude those groups and we're going to, we're going to say, uh, forced relationships between, let's say you, for example, as the son or the daughter and the parent tries to encourage you, if not force you to marry somebody that they feel is good for you. And they are very, very forceful with it. They are abusive with it. So if you don't marry, um, Kevin over there because he's a lawyer, um, he comes from a really good family. I've known his parents for years. They've done a lot for us Then I'm not going to support you financially. And that is something that you might find in families that are very abusive, um, has a lot of trauma and very manipulative. And the parents may actually be these parents right up here that I talk about in this video, uh, which are parents that simply don't care. Um, and you can also go and check out this video right up here as well, where I talk about parents with borderline personality who are very manipulative and controlling. So so, um, you know, these particular parents may try to force you into a marriage because they feel that it's the right thing for you and they may take something from you if you don't comply. And that is abusive. It's saying, you know, that I'm going to kind of um, manipulate the situation all around you. And if you don't listen to me, then I'm going to make sure that you suffer in another way. Uh, the next thing is intimate partner violence. And so domestic violence, for lack of a better word, it's basically just being physically, sexually and emotionally abused by someone that you have agreed to be in a relationship with 
Um, but if we're talking about within your family, this is something that you may observe between family members. So between your parents, between your aunt and uncle's uh, uh, relationships or, or between two people who are married within your family unit. There are some families that just have a long, long history of generational trauma and it tends to perpetuate even to younger generations and sometimes intimate partner violence or domestic violence is part of this and it just continues and it turns in to intergenerational trauma, which is what I talk about right up here in this video if you want to go check that out. The next thing that you're likely to see is financial abuse. If you have a family that is abusive and it has suffered trauma, you're likely to see financial abuse. Now, here's what can happen with financial abuse. Financial abuse could be you are on disability or your sister or your mother's on disability and somebody is a caretaker. That caretaker takes over that, that person on disability, takes over their income and begins spending it lavishly on things that they want or they begin spending it on things that they feel is necessary without the permission of the person whose money it really is. You may also see financial abuse in situations where there's a a state where there is a power of attorney involved right where a family member has given another family member control financially uh, let's say for example your grandparent or maybe your parent or maybe your sister something like that um, they may give you permission to um, pay their bills and pay their medical bills and and you know pay their rent or their mortgage or whatever their car note Financial abuse is if you take that money and you spend it on things that you feel is necessary or you spend it without permission or you blow up the estate for your own benefit, um, that would be financial abuse. Another form of financial abuse within a family uh, would be you are married to somebody who's running everything. They are taking money from you and you don't even know it or they are using money to hold that over your head. You know, it's, it's kind of like if you don't provide me with the things that I want, whether that's children sexual experiences all the time um, if you don't provide me with uh, status if you don't give me what I desire in some capacity I'm going to hold this money from you I'm not going to give you money to cover things things like that the next thing that you're likely to see is something known as violence of honor now this is something that you probably haven't heard of before here's what happened so a family takes it upon themselves to protect the family by um, taking it upon themselves to harm other people. So here's an example of this. Let's say your sister, for example, is dating someone and or dating someone and your family doesn't approve. OK, you don't like your sister's boyfriend, fiance, whatever. Let's say this fiance does something wrong abuses your sister, takes advantage of her in some way, does something. Your brothers may take it upon themselves to stalk this boyfriend, beat up and harass him. And that is violence of honor. It's a way of saying that I'm taking this responsibility upon myself to, to um, display or show or issue violence to somebody else because I feel that in order to keep my family safe, in order to respect my family, I must act out in violence. So that's what violence of honor means. Um, and I'm gonna put the definition right over here for you so you can see that as well, okay? The next thing is forced isolation or um, forced confinement. You know, that's something that can happen as well in a family that's abusive and has a trauma history. You are forced to be isolated from other people. Your relationships are cut off and completely detached from you by a parent who is bossy, controlling, maybe even manipulative and very psychologically unstable. You know, I talk about that in my recent video on borderline personality disorder. Sometimes those parents will completely cut off your relationship with other people because they want the control. They don't want the other people in your life to shine a flashlight on them, right? And show up that their behaviors are not okay. So, um, you know, you're likely to have that in the, in your family if it's, if it's dealing with trauma or if you have some kind of trauma history or if it's an abusive family, your relationships may be cut off, right? Um, I had a consultation with someone over two years ago um, over in Canada where their family, um, you know, it just it was so abusive. The, the daughter could not have any friends outside of the family unit because the friends would constantly um, show her mother up 
and would point out the abusive behavior and mom didn't want that uh, because she needed to save face and she needed to remain in a position of power and authority so she would do something to break off that relationship between the daughter and her friends she would sabotage it so that her her true character would not be would not be found out by the daughter the next thing that you are likely to see would be using the legal system to abuse now I know a lot of people who have done this uh, in many capacities it could be child custody it could be divorce it could be you know two very powerful attorneys going at it it could be uh, who were married or you know in a relationship it could be uh, maybe your boss taking you to court every time you do something or taking you to court and saying that you did things that you didn't some people are so narcissistic and sociopathic that they will utilize the legal system to boss you control you traumatize you and abuse you just keep in mind it's an intimidation tactic the next thing is slipping info on you out to other family members so you know a slip up may be something like um, I'm so happy you're having a baby. That's so wonderful. I just feel so, so bad that you and your husband are getting a divorce right i'm sure you've seen something like that or um my daughter went to that school i'm so sorry she was suspended and then expelled you, i'm sure you know people like that in your family they will drop little things and kind of slip it in there and other family members may not have known and so those kind of statements may trigger them to be like when did this happen? Tell us more about it. Why didn't you tell us? And then the whole thing turns on you and you're in the middle trying to figure out how to protect your territory. Last but not least, let me throw this in here. Um, you know, something known as the cycle of violence. And I'm going to post a link down in the description box for you so that you can click on the cycle of violence. This is something else that's likely to happen. And it's kind of like this, um, this predictable cycle of violence that you can almost you know, you can almost predict, you know, and it's always a calm period, a build up period, you know, a tension period, and then kaboom. And so the peace doesn't last very long at all within the family because it's a cycle of violence. It's just a cycle of abuse and trauma, and it continues on and on. So I'm going to post that in the description box for you so you can learn a little bit more about that. I hope that this video was helpful to you guys. Let me know in the comment section below. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to stick around with us and that thumbs up button and I will see you in the next video. We're going to continue talking. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.